But J- Jamie, what, when do you think you're going to be leaving your house? What you said, like yesterday, you were fed up. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, I think it's more like, I don't think I'm going to be leaving necessarily going places. Cause to be quite honest, like I don't have anywhere I need to go to. And Cutter and I are fortunately in the position like where we can work from home. Like he can do his job from here. Like we don't have to leave to be able to make money for our family. Mine is more like, I'm just ready to loosen up in the way that if there's people that I trust and that I know have, you know, been safe and that are continuing to be safe. Like, I just want to start seeing people. I just want to start going to people's houses. I want people to come over my kids miss that connection. I miss that connection. Like, I don't want to be six feet apart from them. Like, you know, we did decide we pulled the trigger next week. I'm having my nanny come back, um, just for four hours a day so that I can do some things for myself and even just homeschool my kid without my baby. And, um, cause we're going to talk her ear off. She's going to be like, okay, just let me be the nanny. But she has to wear a mask. You know, she yeah, wants yeah. to and she has to. And it's kind of, you know, unfortunately the new normal because she's coming in and out. And I don't know where she, I, I can ask her to be respectful, but she has a family and she has her people she sees. And that's where you can get in trouble, right? Because then it's, then you don't know who they see and blah, 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 blah. But I just, I just can't do it anymore, guys. I can't, I can't just look at the same three faces every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel you for, um, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally with you on that. <laughs> and I think I've already, Oh, what was that? Oh shit. For, I'm, I'm staying away. Oh <laughs> God. No wonder she's fine, but loosen it up. She's, she's got the wrongs. I mean, I've been going like, out. I honestly feel like I want somebody to just cough in my face. <laughs> I think there are a number of men willing to line up and cough on you. Uh, I have to cough in my face for my birthday. That's a fetish for someone. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. And you yeah. are turning 32. 39. Oh, 39. Yeah, you guys, I'm almost 40. That's uh, that's gross. Gross. <laughs> and the cutter was like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, nothing. I'm not a big birthday person. He's like, what do you want next year, a funeral? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just a kid. He's just a boy. Just you can't listen to what these boys say. You yeah, know, it's no funny um, to to take attention away from your birthday and, and talk about me for a second. Uh, I was just before we got on, somebody has this video of their last day in high school that they uploaded and it was from 01. And that's when I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no one had cell phones and just the fact that somebody was bringing a video camera to school was like weird. You know, everyone was like, Hey, you know, like, <laughs> Hey, I'm on a camera and, uh, you know, everyone's hair. I mean, it was just, uh, it was just pre nine 11. And, and it's crazy to think how much things changed in yeah. that year, you know, and you were, let's see, you were already out of high school. Yeah. I graduated 99. So I was yeah. ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, I don't know. Did you go to college somewhere? Or did you, were you already on the show? Like I was already on the show, but I I already know you're on the show, but did you get to do, I know you were tutored. Did you do like college level stuff? Yeah. I was accepted to NYU. Oh yeah. Yeah. Into the dorms, everything. Uh, I was going to the college of arts and sciences. I don't know why I didn't go into the Tisch program or any of the acting programs in hindsight. Like I kicked myself a lot for it because a, they would have supported me and helped me through the whole process. Uh, but for some reason, I thought it was like going to hinder me just being young and stupid. Um, so then, you know, I would say three quarters of the way into the first semester, I realized there was no way that I could balance, you know, a psychology major and all my classes and the, and a film schedule where even at that point, they weren't even picking us up to take us to set. So I was taking the subway you know, mm. downtown New York to Queens by myself at all weird hours of the night and, um, and morning and, you know, missing classes and getting in trouble. So I had to defer right just shy of my second semester. Hmm. Yeah. I, you know, that's, that's an interesting point you bring up. I, I don't know if you should kick yourself, you know, cause I think you, you have and had a, you know, a career at that point. And, uh, some people will always say like that experience trumps all experience, right? Like, but I could have had both. Yeah, you did in my hand. And I went, but then I had a good time because then I just moved into my own apartment and just, you know, 
30. Where were you when 9-11 happened? Did we, have we gone over your 9-11 story or even Rob's? Because um, I don't think I've ever talked to Rob about it. I didn't think we were going there today. Uh, yeah, I'm let's bring it down and let's make it super sad. Because yeah, happy you know birthday, what? Jamie, mid, mid Happy birthday. Where were you when the planes hit? <laughs> and by the way, like, you said 9-11 changed things for all of us. Like it changed a lot for me and Jamie, but for you, oof, right? You're well, th- you know, you know. I, again, I don't want to make it about me, but <laughs> think people started when they, when they saw me in the street before 9-11, it was like, Oh, look at this guy. He's, he's not from here. And then after it was like, what you got? What are you doing over there? Who are you with? Oh my God. Um, yeah. Uh, I, Look, we don't have to talk about it. I, I It just okay. kind of happened and that I was feeling nostalgic. Well, tell me, do you want me to answer your question or should we save this? <laughs> Is it super sad? Is it super sad? I mean, it's 9-11. Of course, it's not happy. It's hilarious. <laughs> What's it's, not sad. it's so funny. No, I had flown on um, 9-10 to Los Angeles on a delayed flight. I was going for the Latin Grammys. I was a presenter and um, I was like supposed to leave New York at maybe 6 or 7 p.m. and our flight was delayed. So we didn't take off till like 10 or 11 p.m. So when I landed in Los Angeles, it was probably like five or six in the morning and I was had to get up two hours later to go do a radio show. And on my way to the radio show, which was 5 a.m. LA time, we heard what happened on the radio and we turned around and went right back to our hotel and I stayed in LA. My mom was with me and I stayed in LA for quite some time. And my mom drove back cross country with um, like a publicist that I was with. Wow. Yeah. So weird that you were here. So weird. Um, And all I wanted to do was be back in New York. Like I hated that I wasn't, in New York for some reason, yeah. like you, I, I have this like very weird reaction when like these tragedies happen that I just like, all I want to do is help. And I, when I feel so helpless when I'm, when I'm far away and, you know, obviously I was so fortunate that m- most of the people I kn- knew and were close with were, were safe, but it was just such a, you know, confusing, devastating time for everybody, you know? Yeah. Jay, do you remember how weird our, some of our trips to LA used to be when we like, they would send little? Just, what when we were little, when we were little, they would send yeah. just me and Jamie to LA because we would get nominated for like kids awards that we were the only kids on the show. So nobody else would go. Did you get slimed? No, uh, nothing like that. Bummer. Nickelodeon did not uh, let HBO shows. I don't think on there. Yeah, I don't know if they've like Nick, Nick audiences and, Sopranos audiences crossed over very much. It's not a, sh- yeah. not, you, you didn't, you weren't on a show unless you got slimed. Word. Yeah. And there was you know? one time where um, they told us to come out to this thing and we show, we got, they get sent us a limo and we're like, oh, this is so cool. And we get, we show up to the thing and remember some woman is like, oh, are you the magician? <laughs> I think there was, an, it was like the wrong year or like the wrong month like there was no award show and rob and i are like all dressed up with our moms getting out of a limo at this like i think it was like at the oakwood apartments if you don't know what the oakwood apartments are or were it was this like month to month or week to week apartment complex you could live in where all these kids and their parents would fly out every year for pilot season or if they were working on a show it was like a place you could have like had little kitchens that people could you know have extended stay or short stay. So it was all actor kids and their parents. So like up roll Rob and I and like fancy clothes. And like, we have to go to like a back room of the Oakwood apartments. And they're like, yeah, no, that's not, that happened last month or that's not happening till like August. We're like, Oh Jesus. We had a whole was, LA for this, by the way. And it was before like everyone was available all the time. So it wasn't like, Oh, hold on. Let me just email or check on my phone for the invitation or this. We yeah. were just like, Hey, this, this is us. We're here. Where do you want us to go? Like, we're ready to present. And they're like, no, we need yeah. a petition for like a birthday in the back. But otherwise. At the very first one Rob and I ever went to, which was like kind of a prestigious one, the Hollywood Reporter had a Young Hollywood Awards <clears throat> and Rob and I both won. And my award was up first and I won and I went up and I don't know why you guys, but I got super emotional. <laughs> 
It's so stupid. And I remember like, when I came on stage, the first thing Rob looked at me and said was like, were you crying? <laughs> like, no, no, I wasn't crying. Everything's fine. I'm fine. I, Cause I was still Either. flat. And I remember they had uh crispy cream donuts in the back. <laughs> and I was like, they were literally like, walking me off from making my acceptance speech and they were like do you want to do the press with this and i was like can i have a donut like i was asking the woman i was so excited because it was i was from i think el crispy cream was only a california thing yeah i had were hot for a while like yeah. people were waiting in lines to get literally them. yeah i think I, like that's one of the things that like really is like a real um like shock to people when they first like start a professional job or like go to these award shows is like the amount of free food that is available all the time. It's pretty alarming to people. Like I, we take it for granted. We're just so used to it, but like, it's pretty incredible that like at any time of day, like anything you want to eat or drink is pretty much at your beck and call. Well, I just want to say you took it for granted. When we started Sopranos, I was 200 pounds. It was all I cared about. <laughs> It, it was, uh, I would literally go and tell my friends, I'd be like, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> so what happened on, on Sopranos is the first season, they had people who would come out with like potato skins and mozzarella sticks. Oh, yeah. And like, it was like, yeah, it was like TGI Friday sampler platters. Like every single hour they would just come out with, and it was crazy. And the second year, the producers, everyone was like, listen, everybody gained 20 pounds last year working on the show. Like they would have like... Italian cold cut platters and like all the shit. So it was just like all day you're, you're grazing. You're Wasn't it two feet. young guys that were stoners apparently? Yup. And they just would get high all day in the craft service truck and just make the craziest shit all day. Yeah. Yes, you couldn't so not eat it. You'd be like were, in between takes and they'd be like, you know, pigs in a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, sure. Yeah. Every time I'm like, uh-huh. Just and keep a on. Up <laughs> Yeah, it was, oof, those were the glory days. I, I don't think I took those for granted. I think I was their number one customer. I think I wrote what, some thank you notes at the end of the season. <laughs> sure. What season What season did you swell up the biggest? No, I, I was second, between first and second. I showed up enormous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I You came prepared. I, you were the I, actor. I like, came prepared. At like 13 years old, I was like, oh, girls don't like this. You know, I, I, I like, like that we would be at parties and people Poor would be like making out and I'd be like, man, I could tell like, like the girl who has to make out with me is not the lucky one, you know? Yeah. Oh. You smell like a McDonald's bag. Yeah. Grease. I, was, I literally was the kid who like sat in my room with like a, tw a two liter bottle of soda and just like a <laughs> bag of Doritos and was just like, nom, 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 nom. and then it was like, Oh, the bag, I would see like the, the ref my reflection in like the cellophane on the bottom of the door <laughs> and just start to cry a little, you know? And then it was like, okay, I need another bag. Like, uh, oh, well, gosh. I, you know, if I had a time machine, I'd go see Jesus one, but two, I'd go see little fat Robbie in his, in his room. <laughs> Looking at himself, catching himself in the bottom of the chip bag. Can I say, speaking of Jesus, Jamie, when you went like this, you were giving me, you look kind of like Jesus today. I do. I'm in my pajamas. Yeah. Well, you know, Jesus was a very yeah, relaxed guy. No, no, it's my birthday. It's, ho it's a holy day. It is. Oh, beautiful. Do you, I, are you? I, uh, what? No, go ahead. I, if I could go, if I, now that I'm watching Sopranos, like, I constantly have my, my husband thinks I'm so nice. I can just constantly keep saying like, fuck, if I could just go back for like one week, one episode, just like, let me live that again. I miss it. So I didn't realize how much I miss it. Hey, a uh, big shout out to manscaped for sponsoring today's episode of pajama pants. They're the best in men's below the belt grooming. Um, they support the show. You guys can support them. Look, we don't sell merch and we don't have a Patreon. Um, for those of you wondering how to support Pajama Pants, just support the sponsors that come on the show. Um, code PJ Pants saves you 20% off and free shipping on your first order. Um, I actually just got my first one and I used it and I probably went a little too low on my first cut. But you no know what? The thing. beauty of hair is it grows back. No such thing. I bet it feels nice for summer. It feels nice. It feels, it feels nice. And, and you know, the, 
just so you know, there's, <laughs> there's three, there's three different levels on that guard. So, um, you know, I just went right out of the box and just <laughs> like I was in the army, like I was enlisting for the draft down there. Awesome. It's just so yeah. you. So wait, Jamie, you're going on record telling guys who shave their pubes. There's no such thing as too much shaving. No, I'm, I'm down with the, the, you know, the clean shave. Wow. The ball, the porn star bald look. I mean, the less friction, the unnecessary friction, the better, in my opinion, mm. and less things to like get in the way. Yeah, no, I agree. But I do, I, I do never, I never go like full on bald. I still, I leave, you gotta leave, you know, you gotta leave a little something. Really getting to know each other, learning when we talk about Manscaped, aren't we? Yeah. That's right. So gotta, Learning a lot. Got to thank Manscaped. I've known Jamie yeah. for twenty years, and because of Manscaped, she knows my whole pube situation better never than I never knew it before. Yeah, because code promo code PJ Pants P J P A N T S twenty percent off, free shipping. Take care of that mound behind the pajama pants. Yeah. <laughs> With Manscaped.com. And that's how I felt when I was watching that video about high school, last day in high school. Things were so much <laughs> easier. Cool, so, but I get it. Hurley shirts were still cool. Did you guys have Stussy? Oh, fuck yeah. We had Stussy, baby. It's Stussy. We had Volcom. We had Hurley, Billabong, Quicksilver, Ruka. Ruka. I just learned how to pronounce that. I used to think it was RVCA. Everyone did. And it didn't help that their logo was RVCA. I mean, it was, what are we supposed to know? How are we supposed to know that? See, I would have to go to the, we would go to like JCPenney and then it was like, all right, Rob, we're time to shop for you. And you have to go to the Husky section. <laughs> was it seriously called Husky? There was a giant sign that said Husky. <laughs> and you would find me underneath it like like a homeless guy in new york underneath the like open 24 hour sign of a deli you would just find me underneath the husky sign like look and, and like you're so embarrassed because of because you think you're better than the other husky kids in this section <laughs> you know what I mean? like you're like i'm not that fucking fa- like i'm barely- comparing yourself to all the other huskiers yeah, like I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be with those kids over there, like trying on jeans and not like elastic waisted. Oh, no. Do you remember a time where you actively were like when you first started trying to lose weight? Like when, when you first were like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of fucking stretch marks or I'm tired of fucking being tired all the time. I mean, wh- when did you decide to sh- like have enough luckily thank god i never got stretch marks <laughs> uh because right now at like 140 pounds with stretch marks it would it would be it would be weird but i remember james Gandolfini telling me about the atkins diet and he was like yeah you get to eat as much as you want and you lose weight and that was all i needed to hear i remember That's so funny. Like atkins. yeah i did atkins for like two and a half months or so. I Wait, what was the deal with Atkins? What do you, what, no what's, is that no carbs or only carbs? I, I never, <laughs> only I, I, carbs. What's that? I don't know, dude. I, they're all there. Each one of these things is like all of this thing or none of this thing. And then the next one comes along as the complete opposite. That's such a, a question from a guy who's always been 80 pounds his whole life. Like, no, dude, that's, that you know what? That's, I take offense because I, I actually looked at a few photos when I used to drink a lot of beer and I was up to 190 pounds. I'll have you know, young man. That was just bloat. It was, I was, <laughs> it was yeast and it was like bubbles. I was just yeah. yeasty bubbles. <laughs> I, uh, and I, I, yeah, so you could eat as much protein as you want. So I would eat, no joke, I would make, like packs of eight hot dogs at a time and chop them up and just put mustard on it or make like packs of like four hamburger patties and put like hot sauce on it. And I would just sit in front of the TV. So what's the difference between that and keto then? Uh, well, I think keto is like keto high in fat. Good fats. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So like it's Atkins, but with an avocado. Yes. They would yeah. rather you have an avocado than maybe like four fillets. And right. so... And so James Gandolfini is like, yeah, try Atkins. And then you, and then you did it. And how long before you started? No, no, he didn't tell a 12 year old to try only eating meat <laughs> for three months. He did. He was just talking. And oh, he and you, to you heard it. Oh, he was okay. like, rub. 
Yeah. He's like, listen, it's, it's, Let me pull you aside. You little fatty. It's your 12th birthday. We've all been talking. <laughs> Cut out the carbs. You fat piece of shit. We see you rolling around set and we're tired of it. Yeah. They have I remember to, all those guys like always talking about like them gaining weight, losing weight. And honestly, they always looked the same to me. Like I never, like he would be like, Oh, I put on so much weight or oh, I'm so much thinner now. I'm, so, I'm like, everyone literally looks the same. I, that's how I feel about all everyone. I like, like, I remember my mom used to come home and she would like an hour after coming home, she'd be mad at me. I'd be like, what? She'd be like, I cut 10 inches off my hair. I'd be like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm supposed to notice that. Like, I don't know this. And like, well, you know, when people wear like wigs and toupees and everyone's like, look at that asshole. I'm like, I'm like, Oh, this guy's like 70 and has such great hair. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, the same. I'm the same. Yeah, there's just a, some things that I can't like when it comes to like hair, wigs, toupees, shit like that. Like people are like, oh, that person clearly dyes their hair. I'm like, oh, I just, like it just doesn't register in my brain. Yeah. Are you, you look a, more are you towards a, the inside? Are you a birthday guy, Cass? Do you like birthdays? Do you like? No, no. I don't like to be reminded of it. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents didn't really make a huge deal. You know, I would get a card with some money in it, and my dad would like, "Good job, good job living," you know, and give me a pat on the back, and then that was kind of it. I remember I I had to kind of take things into my own hands. So one year where I really wanted a Sega Saturn, I invited all my friends to Lampost Pizza and told them <laughs> to bring me cash as a gift. <laughs> I said I only want cash. And you can come have pizza. My parents will pay for the pizza. It'll give you some quarters for the cruise in USA uh, cabinet over there in the corner. But then I got 400 something dollars cash. Next day, went to Babbage's and bought a Sega Saturn, which we all know is one of the most successful consoles to ever come out. Other than that, no. Birthdays really mean not a whole lot. This last one I had, Lindsay threw a big birthday bash and I was just kind of uncomfortable. I don't... I don't uh, I, I, I'd rather keep it low key. And um, if we can like chill and like watch a movie, it's great. You know what throws me off about birthdays right now is Instagram because um, like everyone posts now, now it's like clear, like you don't ever post like a hard post for someone's birthday. You just do like a story. Mm. And I woke up this morning and I had like all these friends post stories for me and I'm so grateful and I love seeing them and seeing the pictures that they have and what they say means so much, but the responsibility I feel to like repost it and recognize it. And like you, you want to do everyone because you don't want anyone to feel like, Oh, she only reposted these people and not me. And then the text messages and like, I feel like I'm someone that like, I have to respond right away. Otherwise I'll forget. So then I get anxious about it. So I've been anxious all day about this. <laughs> so next year I'm turning 40. Okay. And I'm going to put a thing out where like, don't tax me or anything. I know you love me. The only thing I'm asking right now is people to just save as much money as they can. Cause I want to go to Mexico for a week and leave my kids and like, just hang out with my friends for a whole week. So you're going to go to Mexico for a week, leave your kids there and come back home? No, I'm going to leave <laughs> them here. And I just want people to like come in and out when they can to come hang with me. That's amazing. I, I like, like that. You know, and don't post it on Instagram. My schedule is usually pretty wide open. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. So that what you said about Instagram is interesting to me because I would think that maybe some people did post a hard post about you and maybe those people are your real friends. You no, know? for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there, is there a delineation there, you know, for the people that are posting hard posts? Cause I, it's so funny that I don't think about well, what should be a story or what, sh what's going to be on the grid. I don't either. I just follow other people's leads. Mm, mm -hmm. you know I mean, so I've noticed that like, yeah. oh, okay, now we've moved to trends. Group. Yeah. Who's yeah. starting these trends? I you know what I mean? No, but I'm following. Yeah, I want to be one of these guys. I am listening and I am obeying. If you look at my husband's Instagram. Siri, I remind me in one year to make a grid hard post for Jamie's birthday and not a story. The day's not over. 
No, no, no. Cass. See, Cass never listens. Next year. You know what? He has no photos with me barely, unless it's the podcast, because he never asks me to hang out pre Oh, but next year is her 40th. She wants no posts. He doesn't listen. This is why Lindsay has to yell at him. Listen, um, no, you should I have many faults. Okay. Are you coming to Mexico I, next year? Okay. Well, next year, Jamie won't be home and that's going to be a great time for me to break in and sniff your undies. But also I'll make a, I'll make a hard grid post for you today. I think I may do a story. I uh, let's so, grow. Let's focus this next year, Jamie, and grow to a hard grid post. I want you know what I want. I want a fucking slideshow next year. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, with, with, with a song that you've thought a lot about. In the back. I know. I I know some people are going to take this as flirting. We're flirting, and it's and that's true. We are. Yeah, we love to flirt. Yeah, it's helpful. Right. Um, you're right. I only actually have photos of us from. And from the show, but also my head in your lap at your that, house. That one. So that's that's pretty good. And um, so look forward to that. And if I do post it, you know, I, I'm secure with myself. I don't need you to repost or like say anything. Just know that like we had this conversation and it's and I'm doing it just because I care and not because I need the validation. Totally. Well, I think it's just more like I'm probably so annoying to follow today because people are like, oh, this girl just keeps posting about all the people that love her. But like. I'm just appreciative that people took the time to find a photo and say something nice and you want to like give the thanks back, but maybe I shouldn't have just done anything. I don't know. No, you, you're so sweet. I think anyone that even remotely knows you would know that it's just coming from a place of appreciation. And if Rob were to do it on the other hand, I think it'd be, it'd have different motives attached to it. Actually, Rob, I still have your birthday present sitting in my room because I have your birthday present pre-pandemic. Though. Uh, I, I see. Rob, I, sent me, Rob sent me a birthday present. I need your um, address. Go ahead and just say it right now for me. <laughs> Rob, um, Rob can give it to you. Rob yeah, yeah. sent me um, pl- this plant-based ice cream that I pounded that coconut butter one last night, Rob. How good is and that? I don't like coconut. It I hate so coconut. so good. What's it called again? What's the company called? Sunscoop. It's my friend's Sunscoop. company. Oh, my God, you guys. Well, there's a plug. Yeah, real. It was great. Sorry, Manscaped. It's all about fun scoop now. Fun scoop. Come on, read the copy. What is it? (laughs) So good. Uh, Enough about my birthday. Well, before we get off the birthday, I had, um, I was dating this girl and I told her, listen, like, I know you want to do something for my birthday. I was, I hate when people sing happy birthday to me. I hate it. It bothers me so much. Whatever. She's like, fine. I wanted to go to dinner and we won't do that. And I'm like, I'm only going to dinner if you promise we're not doing the happy birthday thing. She's like, fine. So we go to dinner for, it's only four of us. And we go to my favorite restaurant in Queens. We're sitting there eating. And, um, the, uh, waiter comes from out of the kitchen and he has a tray of cupcakes with, uh, candles in each cupcake. They're lit. He walks through the entire restaurant gets to me, sets it down, and then he just stands there, and she's like, don't worry, I told him not to sing. (laughs) But then it was the everyone just in the restaurant looking, waiting for the word. It was the word, and I was, I had, I was like, happy birthday, (laughs) like, you know, (laughs) it was the fucking word, like, so I realized the only thing that's worse than people singing happy birthday to you is people not singing happy birthday to you. Totally. I can see that. And then I saw a video of people singing happy birthday to you Hefner at his birthday at the Playboy Mansion. And it was one of the greatest things because they're like, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. (laughs) You saw people like realize right at the moment of the hue, like they started looking at each other and they're like, oh, this is a you know, weird thing. He's like 97 being like, every year. Yeah, exactly. He's like, God, I remember this was the first time on my sixth birthday when this happened and it was so awkward. Yeah. Well, it's over now. Uh, Rob, what's your 9-11 story? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, look, Jamie, just on a, on a nice note, it's been really great to have you in my life. Um, you've been 
uh, way more sweet and way more authentic and real than anything Rob said that you were <laughs> pre meeting you. And that's something because he really talked you up a lot. And no, uh, like I, uh, it's I, great, and it's great to have a, this connection with you and and your family, and um, just you're you're a very person, and uh, I don't need to put it on a story for for you to hear it. Thanks I for being great. You, and I love you, and thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't need to say anything nice about Jamie on my birthday because I say it, I say too much. Yeah, you make me feel like it's always my birthday the way you celebrate me, Rob. Yeah, you're you know. You're my family. You're more than my family. I love you very much. I love you. And oh, speaking of birthdays, I had to fill out, uh, you know, when it's like the age bracket thing and it's like, are you this to this? Are you this? God. I jumped in my last birthday, just like two months ago or whatever. I jumped. So it was 18 to 24. Then the next one, like I went to the, be like, oh, I'm going to click the next one. And it was like 25 to 34. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm 35 to 44. Yeah. Welcome to my bracket. Wow. Thank you. It's, you know, it's it's nice to be here. Kasim, that's Kasim's bracket too, right? We're all, we're all in the same bracket. That makes me feel better. We're in the same. You know, I'm going to be 37 this year. This year, I feel like we just started it and it's already half over and I've done nothing. It seems like this, nothing's happened. Nothing. No one has. I know. And, and, and now they keep extending it. And now there's all this talk that there's going to be a second shutdown in the fall for this whole thing. It's really hard to get excited about anything right now. It's did just you a that little video? stuff. I, mean, I sent Rob this video last night. It's just, I, I just feel like at this point now I'm confused. I'm yeah. so <laughs> confused. There's no end in sight. No, but they're slowly opening up things, but they're also extending it. Like the beach is open, but you can't sit on the sand, but you can go in the water, but you still got to stay home through August. Restaurants aren't open yet. You can't cut your hair. You know, there's all this. I'm having to do back, uh, back room haircut deals. Like I'm trying to find like people to come to me because they, I can't go to a place to get my hair cut. This lady who cuts my hair is, she's been uh, delaying the appointment because uh, everything's getting extended. And I'm like, hey, this is gonna sound weird, but can you can you just like come? Oh, can I? Can you can you come to here, or I can go she, to you? What if she wears a mask and you do it outside? I told I told her that, but I also don't want to come across as a creep. But uh, yeah, I my mean, she's like, I'm open to it. We'll talk. That's what she said. One of my best friends, who is also my hairstylist and is in like my pod of people I've been seeing, is coming over today and cutting my hair. Really? Yeah, I look like I belong. belong. Oh, who's this guy? This is Rocky. Hi, Rocky. Hey, buddy. This is so. Is this the one? Because I know you want Lindsay to give up one of her dogs to live with you. Is that the one? No. That one is stays out there. (laughs) Yeah. So you, you know what just happened? I, uh, Lindsay's like, hey, you know your garage? I have a window that my garage. She's like, you know the window's broken. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, there's a hole in it. I go out there. I do some like top quality investigative work. I go and find, um, I give my dogs like deer antlers, you know, to chew on. There's a deer antler around all this broken glass. The only thing I can um, guess happened is that they were like, you know, and it flipped up and broke okay. two panes of glass. Her dog's done nothing. Both these dogs have done nothing but fuck up my carpet. They pissed on my carpet. There's like five yellow stains that won't come out. I have a broken glass. Every time I walk out onto my lawn, there's like just tons of shit I got to pick. I mean, these things are a goddamn nightmare. But you know what? If you're dating someone and you decide to move in with them, this is part of it. And you can't show... You can't show that it bothers you. And uh, well, this is part of compromise. Maybe and then when you move into the new house, which Mazel tov, by the way, when you move Thanks. into the new house, it will feel like everyone's because I'm sure her dogs are into like being like, this isn't our space. We got to mark it. Like this is, they feel the energy. The first of all, they feel they're not welcome by you. I'm sure. Oh, what, what about, what about this is not welcome, huh? Well, yeah. He looks terrified that you're going to. How affectionate I am. He does not look like he feels safe. He's, he's probably like a trauma dog. Like he rolls he's, up to he's you. He's literally saying, help me. 
Yeah, he's, he's also got a bark collar on. He shows you love because he's like, oh, my my mommy yells at this guy all day. I feel, you know, like he's got a, he comes, he, he knows. He can, dogs can sense that stuff. Yeah, he comes yeah. up, puts his paw right on my shoulder and says, uh-huh. you get it, buddy. <laughs> she well, yells I think it's new home, you're all going to be going in as one unit. So I feel like there will be a lot less destruction, I would like to think. I hope you're right. I hope I you're right. We are... Uh, we are hoping to get in there in the next couple of weeks, but uh, exciting! I'm going to be sad to see this place go. Really? Where am I supposed to put up my copy of the Roswell newspaper two days after the crash? And where am I going to put my comic books? Those are great. Like, my big foot. Roswell footprint. is, I feel like, a great like. Do you have like a powder room? That's like a great bathroom. Converse stare at stare when your some guest is going in the bathroom in your house. Stare at read something that they. You know, it's before. not a bad idea, and I'd love to have you and Cutter over. Um, I'd love to come over when when this. I think if you're willing to open up your pod, you should consider opening up to us as well, because uh, we're we haven't been sick and we sure could use the company. Have you seen no one? No, you've seen people. No, we've. I, you know what? I've been walking down at the beach with a mask, but I've been walking around. And uh, we have like a group of friends who we're in our pod with. But I, I know a lot of people even frown upon that. I barely have seen my brother. I'm trying to keep a distance still away from my parents. Um, so we're probably, we, we've been more lax than you, huh? Like you're not seeing your parents just... Well, because they're old. I'm, I'm seeing them. I'm like going there, just dropping stuff off or picking stuff up, but I'm not really going in to socialize. Is this an excuse? Or are you really worried? No, I mean, look, we have nothing. Uh, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? Sit there and talk to my parents? No, I've been doing, I've been doing an okay job. I just really don't want them to have even a remote chance of being sick because they will go down hard. I mean, they're lifelong smokers. They're just, right. they're not even from this country. You know what I mean? <clears throat> mm-hmm. so who they knows smoke still yeah yeah oh wow that, I, oh dude yeah. yeah they're they're like everything bad you could do to your body they do you know what i mean oh. except hard drug use except hard drug use. oh no, yeah there's always tomorrow though we'll see i feel like i'm just happy for bryce i feel like he's saving millions of dollars on pellegrino it's oh. true we're not sucking down pellegrinos there yeah we were crushing them. Uh, Pellegrinos. Jamie, what's what's the worst? Do you have any bad birthday stories or, or really great birthday stories? Do you remember my 21st birthday, Rob? Was that at Suede? Yeah. So Is that the white suit? No, no that was his. <laughs> my 21st birthday, I didn't know that there was a large surprise party happening at the opening of what was ended up becoming like... Oh, wait, birthday. Jamie. Hold on one second. I have a birthday surprise for you. This is from both of us. No, it's just from me. Bryce. Yeah, we, we it, both talked about this. <gasps> Happy <laughs> birthday to you. How Yay! You Thank you. All this how, made my day. I'm good. I'm happy that Fuck That's Delicious is coming back just That's in time. Right. That's right. Every Monday. How are you doing? Where are you driving to? I'm chilling. I'm actually right now in uh, I'm in Lower Manhattan, just driving around, catching the vibes. How are the vibes? That's nice. You know, it's kind of uh, it's depressing out here, to be honest with you. Yeah, I Chevy bet. Dewey. I got my baby sleeping in the back of the car. Um, how old's your baby? He's brand new. He's six months old. Oh my gosh! So you would have been quarantined anyway. Oh, I was quarantined anyway. Actually, I was supposed to be on tour, but the fact that this quarantine happened actually saved saved a lot of family time and a lot of a lot of great memories and a lot of seeing the boy grow. First, yeah. first crawl, first food, first everything. Oh, that's awesome! It's pretty amazing. How you guys feeling? How you doing? You all right? I'm all right. Yeah, we're all doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice, beautiful day here. In Los Angeles. Is everyone outside? What are you doing? You staying in? Mike, Mike, my littlest is two. He's napping, but as soon as he wakes up, we'll all just be out in the pool for the rest of the day, which is a savior for us for sure. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah. Yeah, we're lucky for sure. 
Yeah, man. That's it. I'm an I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I appreciate that so much. You don't even know. Thank you. And we'll get we'll get together soon. Rob, you're the man. Take care. All right. Thank you so much, bro. Good to see you. Peace, brother. Take care. Bye. Peace. Wait, where were you on 9-11? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh, if anybody, just missed it. If anybody's listening and we didn't say it, that was Action Bronson coming on to wish. Yes, to- Rob knows I'm a big fan. Oh my god, that was so cool! I should have showed him some of my ancient alien stuff. He likes that stuff. Well, he's driving, and he's uh, his fuck fuck that's delicious is his show, and it's coming. It's out right now. It's just uh, for me. Yes. Was that on Vice? Yes. Yeah. And it's so good. What a nice guy to come wish you a happy birthday. Also, nice. how does he wear a face mask with that thing on his face? His beard is huge. He's got a whole French braid. Just pull it up. Through that. That's well, you know, I'm glad you liked our surprise that we uh, we both got for you. Hey, Cass. Thanks for all the work you put in on that, Cass. So, Jamie. No problem. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. What was your what was your 21st birthday? Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Um, OK, so uh, it was ended up being the op- very opening of our favorite place to ever go to was this place called Suede. And I was out to dinner with my family and my fiance at the time. And I used to at that time suffer from terrible migraines. I never knew when they would come or what would cause them. But when they came, they came fast. They came hard. And I would always go to the hospital. So I'm at this dinner and I can't fight it. I start throwing up at the dinner and I'm like, I got to go to the hospital. And my, my, my fiance at the time kept being so weird being like, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. I'm like, dude, like you've been through this with me before. I have to go to the hospital. So we get to the hospital in the ER, they're getting an IV in me. And he's like, can you shoot her up with Demerol? And they were like, no. And he like pulls the doctor aside. And I don't know what conversation happens. The next thing I know, I'm getting shot up with something called Demerol. And I'm like, to- I'm like, oh. And they're like, do you feel okay? To you? Because I just need to take you to the rest of this dinner. I am having fireworks. Like, this is what he's telling me. And I'm like, okay. I'm still having a migraine, but then I also have this Demerol. Next thing I know, I'm like walking into this random place on 23rd Street, was it, Rob? Or 20? Yeah, 23rd between 6 and 7. 23rd, like this random door. And the first person I saw was the wardrobe lady from Sopranos, Juliet. And I'm like, where am I? And then I hear surprise. And it's like, all my friends, all my family, the whole cast of Sopranos, like flashing photographer lights. And it, I, people probably thought I was so fucked up, which I was, but not for the reasons you get fucked up on your 21st birthday. And I went, I took a couple of pictures with Rob and Edie and like my cake. I like tried to smile and then I left. I left my own 21st birthday party and went home and slept. I was there until they turned the lights on at 4 a.m. You were. You turned it, you held it down for me. And I was then there five nights a week for the next three years. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a dream, being able to just be at your own surprise party for just a little bit. No, I felt terrible. Oh, wow. What a dream. Yeah, so go home. Bad. That's what? great. Um, well, you know, I, I don't know if you guys want to go over 21st birthday parties, but... Um, I did mine at Vegas and I don't remember what happened, but I think at one point we decided to go to a strip club with uh, suits on because that's what you, that's what people did in those um, movies like uh, uh, wingers or made what? Yeah. And we dressed up, we dressed up in suits and uh, we went, really sharp suits and we went and decided to like pretend like we had money and we didn't have money and uh we went into the strip club and uh we decided that we weren't going to do any lap dances because we didn't have enough cash for that we just had enough to sit and put dollars down and when the strippers found out that we had no real money they just alerted all the other strippers like these guys don't have money don't bother coming over here because we kept turning down the the lap dances so we, ruse. <laughs> we we slinked out of there and felt like a couple of goddamn deadbeat uh-huh. losers. Um, that so sucks when that happens. 
Yeah. Who would have thought that making it look like you had money and actually not having money wouldn't really work out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you were working at like Best Buy before the, the YouTube days, were you in debt ever? Um, no, not really. I've actually always been pretty good with money. I remember I took out like a 10 grand loan to like fix up my truck <laughs> and, uh, I paid that off within a couple of years. But I mean, other than that, I don't really, I never really had a ton of debt. I just lived kind of within my, my means, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Should we get to an email or two? Yeah. I have an email and we, yeah, this is, this is good because we keep saying we're going to do it. And, um, we just kept, we, we just pl- plow right through it. Uh, okay. Here's a good one. This one's from Hold on Cass, Jamie, when I said that you have a birthday surprise, what was the first thing that popped in your head? Not, nothing until I saw that somebody was joining. And then to be honest, like for a minute, I was like, is that action Bronson? Really? But like at the, like the split second before he came, I really was clueless up until then. Wow. So you're, I thought maybe you had a video message you were about to play for me and I didn't know from who. Right, right. All right. Sorry, Cass. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's, that's fine. Um, I'm used to it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Javier Ramirez says, "Yer, what's good guys. My name is Javier. And during this quarantine, I just found out about your podcast right before I started watching the Sopranos, which was during the end of April. And I just now finished the series. And all I can say is Jamie and Rob did amazing. But my question is this, my, uh, la- my last se- semester of college, I was supposed to graduate, but they postponed the commencement ceremony. And I don't know how to feel. I feel like I put in all the hard work for four years and this virus just took that ceremony away. And I feel like my hard work meant nothing. Do you guys have any recommendations on how I should be feeling because I'm kind of stressed and pissed that, that I may not even get a commencement ceremony? I know I'm chatting lol, but have how have all of you been dealing with this quarantine and are you in a rush to start going back outside when all of this is done? Keep up the great work, which is kind of how we started the podcast. Yeah. Thanks Javier. So my brother is 22 and he was supposed to graduate uh, college, my brother Brian. So he's going through the exact same thing. And it's like, I honestly don't feel like there's anything you can tell somebody with that because at the time it really does mean something to you. Like I was never a kid who cared about prom or wanting to go to the graduation. So like all that just meant nothing to me at the time. But even now, like people who I know who were, who are 40 years old, who it didn't mean a lot to then they're like, Oh yeah, I don't even really remember. Or like, you know, it just becomes like, obviously it's something that you're leading up to in your life when you're 21, 22, and it's such a big deal. But then like later in life, when you're 40 years old, like, I don't, I don't know a lot of people who are like, man, that commencement ceremony was just the, 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 if we can like how Kasim wants to go back to high school, you know, like, and like hanging out and haircuts and this, like, I just don't know people who are like, when we all sat there in our caps and gowns and it meant so much to me. And I don't know. I'm with you, Rob. I, I think that's a great way to put it. Like I, I was at my graduation, but it's not by any means like the pinnacle of my my time in high school or what I would remember first or reflect back to first. Um, so, I mean, my I it's my sincerest, you know, I have empathy for like not having that, that moment because it is a moment that people think about and, and look forward to and talk about. And it's, you know, it's in every movie and in every story you ever hear, right, of anything coming of age. I, I get that. I get that. And I, I really feel for the people that are, are, you know, not getting the opportunity to experience it. And I think people are doing the best they can and schools are doing the best they can to do that. I mean, my kid just started his life in school this year in kindergarten and, and he's feeling a massive loss and he's like having a mental breakdown that he has to go back as a first grader without finishing his year as a kindergartner. So I just can't imagine it for older kids, you know, how they feel. It must be so hard. And, you know, I guess the only solace is that like you truly are all in this together and, I think we're, there's just so much unknown and things are changing every day, all day. People are just trying to, you know, figure this out as they go. And it, one thing it's done is really brought people together and slow people down. And I think nothing will ever go back to normal and things will forever be different. But with all that said, I'm almost kind of looking forward to seeing how, you know, we react as like a 
as humans. Yeah. Well said, you know, I, I'm very curious too. I, I would love, it's like, there's a lot of worry and there's a lot of stress about like, Oh, well, you know, what's going to happen with all this unemployment and like, are my parents ever going to leave the house? And like, are we going to be able to go to concerts and, you know, things like that. But I'm just curious, just even like what's directly in front of us, you know? And, and it seems like now when we kind of thought we were going to be easing up restrictions and being able to like maybe go to restaurants with socially distance, it seems like all that stuff just got like pushed a little farther away. Yeah. And, um, and like you said earlier, I'm like just super confused and like, and then I'm also hearing all this stuff about how we're just going to have to lock down in the fall. And, and, and it seems like we've been safe. Um, and part of me wants to be rewarded for that. Like in some weird way, it's like, Oh, well, we should be able to like go out and yeah. restriction. But unfortunately that's, it's just not up to me. And then who gives a shit whether I want to feel rewarded or not. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, Fauci said at the end of this, anyone who acted properly, it would have felt like an overreaction, you know, initially. It might feel like an overreaction for you to not to leave your house for two months and like not see anyone, but you've ultimately done the right thing. Um, yeah. And if you, you know, I can totally see the uh, being bummed out about not being able to graduate or do the ceremony. I think if you were to talk to me about it, I would have just been stoked to be done with school and been like, all right, it's a bummer. We don't get to throw the cap and gown, but like, all right, now I'm like officially done with school, which is great. Um, and I think in some ways you're in a cool position to just be embarking upon your like career and your, in whatever job you're going to be getting into now. Um, as opposed to like somebody maybe who's been out of school for 10, 15 years and, and maybe just had like the rug swept out from under them mm -hmm. amid all this. So there's like a, there's a silver lining in it. Um, and to be honest, I, I don't really remember my high school graduate. I know you're graduating college. I don't really remember my high school graduation much except for like, I was really hot and, uh, it was like just a weird day, you know, other than that, uh, I was just like stoked to be able to like move on. But school. also like 15 years from now or 20 years from now, when you're telling your grandkids, like nobody ever sits down and is like, you want to hear the story of my graduation right. ceremony? Cause it's like, who cares? But when you have the story of like, Oh no, we were the first year to not like, there was a pandemic and we yeah. didn't have our graduations like, like ceremony that that story is going to trump anyone else. Who's like, yeah, we walked down the thing to this song and we threw, and I don't even think kids are allowed to throw their hats in the air anymore because kids were getting their eyes poked out. <laughs> yeah. For real? I would, I would recommend much like to tie it in the kind of the beginning of the podcast, get as much of the, what's happening around you, like on camera and, and record it. Cause I got such a joy out of watching somebody else's last day in high school in 2001, yeah. just now. And, uh, you'll, you'll pat yourself on the back years from now when you get to be like, Oh, I remember that guy. And like, okay. man, remember those stupid jeans we used to wear? I mean, all that stuff, um, that you kind of take for granted now, um, you'll be thinking about and glad you captured later on, you know, and just think about, it. we didn't have any photo streams. We didn't take, like, we take a photo a day. A lot of people take a photo a day and they upload it Yeah, and back then you were lucky to like take, have a, a disposable camera and develop the film from that. Like maybe once a year, Our somebody would ask make collages for us to oh, this use is crazy. it if you want. Yeah. It's amazing. Somebody was asking me about like what I looked like in high school. I honestly only have one stack of photos and it's from my senior trip. I don't have any photos from me in, in high school, yeah. which is crazy to think now how prevalent photos are, which is probably better. Like I, I'm like, I'm glad that evidence isn't really out there, but. Uh. Well, that's what's, weird. that's what's weird about like when our kids or grandkids or whatever see pictures of us, they're going to be like, how come you were wearing the same shirt in all these pictures? And it's like, well, no, you only had a camera for a day. Like you had a disposable right. camera for one day. You, you somehow got it. You, you went through all of them. You but like, I have like, three groups of pictures in my uh when i lived in my old apartment and i remember like i had this one like reebok blue shirt on for one third of the pictures and then like another outfit for the other one and another one instead of like you know now kids are fun but you said like 
when are our parents going to be able to leave? My dad told me that he would go on a cruise tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How crazy I, is that? Yeah. Well, look, dude, he'd be the only one on there. I, I just don't know how cruise ships make it after this. I really don't. A lot That's of what I said to him. touching the railings. Yeah. And his answer was, I'd go on one tomorrow. I was like, I was like, these cruise ships have cruise ship companies have no shot at making it. And he's like, I'll go. He's like, I would just be careful. <laughs> it's crazy. So I just want to say, Dad, nice knowing you. Yeah. Bon- I'm glad I met him. Bon voyage, pops. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, Jamie, happy birthday. And uh, I wish I could be with you guys and give you a great big hug and just be warned next time I do see you in person, I will be giving you a hug. I can't not hug people when I see them. I can't do it. It's, it's so like, I've realized how much like that connection really means to me because I've done a couple of backyard hangs where we stay and it's like, it physically hurts me. I, I hate it. I hate that I can't. I'm a yeah, I, it's weird for me too. Somebody who's like not a phys- physically touchy guy, I, I do, I do know that it's missing right now. Yeah, you know? and more Even than though, three seconds. Hold it three seconds because that's when it like really gets in you. Yeah. yeah. So well, here's here's to hugging you. soon. Hopefully, I'm gonna hopefully see Rob this weekend, right, Robbie? Yeah. Well, J- Jamie said that we should go over there and swim. I'll, I'm look, I'm down. I think I'm going to be moving, but, uh, I'd love to come there and swim. Came up with an excuse. Mikey. Well, you know, you can come down, you can come down to my side of town. We go in the ocean. I carry two children. Well, yeah, but my, what am I going to do with my kids in the beach? They can't. All right. I'll come to you. It's fair. It's fair. <laughs> it's a fair request. And it's your birthday. But if people are listening to this and they're very sensitive about people hanging out, then we're not going to hang out it's for those people. Yeah, just yeah. pretend like we didn't say anything. People. You're not our people. <laughs> yeah, you guys shut the podcast off at 56 minutes because uh, this part's not for you. Yeah. But I listen. People have to understand. We, I've, I've been in my apartment for fucking 62 oh, days. We have, four- been, we have been following the directions. We have been super, super, super adherent to the rules, respectful of other people, not just our own family. Absolutely. I think it's just, you know, we're slowly reconnecting. Kasim's girlfriend has probably been a little loose on the, uh, on the quarantine, but everyone else, we've been really following, you know, you know, I got to give her credit. She's, um, she's, she's been learning how to wash her hands a little more oh, often. Good for her. I think she's up to two a day now. So Fish. it's great. Fish. That's um, all right. Thank you guys for, for thanks for watching so much. Thank you for my decorations, Rob. Oh, of course. Happy birthday, take a picture. Man. Hang in there, guys. We'll be we'll be back to something. Hopefully, we'll be in the studio. I think within the next four four weeks. I think that's what Bryce said. Okay. But um, whenever you know, Jamie's ready, I'm I'm ready. There's just something about the timing on these zooms. It's just not quite what I like. You know what I mean? I know. And I like to I like to physically touch Robert, and I like to touch the back of Jamie's head sometimes. And I'm, you know, that, that sort of stuff throws me off when I can't do it. And, and we totally know that the quality is not the same. So we want to thank everybody who uh, stuck yeah. with, us, stuck with us through the zooms and the quarantine and trying to, you know, we're, when, when we're back in, it's going to be a big, we'll do, we'll do a big reunion. It's gonna oh, be- we're all going to share a Pellegrino. Yeah. <laughs> Put our lips all over it. Three straws in one bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that too. All right. Happy birthday, Jamie. We love you. Love you guys so much. Thank you so much.